Few things are better in sports than a game seven, and the Hoosiers are involved in one tonight with Kentucky. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. You are locked on Hoosiers, the one and only daily IU podcast. We are part of the Locked On Network, your team every day, free and available anywhere you guys get podcasts, including over on YouTube. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. I'm your host, as always, Jacob. Want to give a shout out to FanDuel. Make every moment more. Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet. Up to $2,500 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. This is the IU Kentucky episode. And I don't just mean that because as I'm sure many of you watched over the weekend, uh, IU and Kentucky are battling out in the NCAA tournament at the uh, regional in Lexington. But every segment in today's episode relates to IU and Kentucky in some form or fashion. Let's start at the top, though, in that game seven that we mentioned in the baseball regional that we just mentioned, IU and Kentucky tonight, winner take all game seven at the Lexington Regional. For those that didn't watch this weekend, let's rewind a bit and get you caught up on what has gone down in this regional. So the Hoosiers started off on Friday with a big win over West Virginia to open up tournament play. They won 12 to six, blew that game open uh, late on and come away with the win, advanced them to uh, Saturday's game against Kentucky in which a, the pitching showed up for one, which has been what we've discussed. If the pitching is there, the Hoosiers are probably going to have enough offense to compete with most teams and especially teams in this regional. The pitching was there. Indiana got what it needed. Ryan Kraft threw four innings, gave up just one run. I believe it was only his second start of the season. Uh, Three hits, and then Craig Yoho and Connor Foley came in for uh, a combined five innings of work and only gave up one run, uh, one earned run as well. So IU got what it needed from its pitching staff and then got what it needed from its uh, offense as well. They were trailing 7-1, to one, excuse me, they were trailing 3-1 to one in the seventh inning when the biggest hit of the season, maybe, Peter Cerruto, the number nine batter, the catcher, hits a three-run home run to give them a 4-3 lead. Hoosiers tacked on an insurance run in the eighth inning, and then come away with the victory, a huge win on Saturday, which forced Kentucky into the loser's bracket and meant the Hoosiers had two chances to win one game to advance to the Super Regional for the first time since 2013, which brings us to Sunday's game, which was not remotely competitive, if we're being very honest about this one. Uh, The Hoosiers, the pitching was not there. and the result was Kentucky really laying it onto them. Uh, Really none of the Hoosiers pitching was effective on the day. Every pitcher gave up at least two runs and three of the five that they used gave up at least three runs. If you're doing some math and starting to do some counting 16 to six is what Kentucky ended up uh, putting up on the Hoosiers. That was a lot closer to the game during the regular season, which I believe was 12 to 2. Ben Sealer was a starter. He only won an inning and a third, gave up four hits, four runs. This pitching staff, one of the more bizarre issues they seem to have, they just can't stop hitting people. On Sunday alone, in a one nine inning game, they hit nine batters. So if walks will haunt you, Hitting batters are going to haunt you all the same. They walked four. They hit nine. That's 13 runners you're just giving them on top of the 14 hits they had. That's a recipe for disaster, and disaster is what it was. 
the Hoosiers tacked on a couple of runs in the ninth inning. If you're wanting to look for any sliver of hope and hoping that there's some momentum you can build from that, it, it's a long shot in that regard. But Indiana will still have another chance. As we said, two shots to win one game, which means tonight at 6 p.m., Indiana will take on Kentucky. It is game seven of the regional. It is the final game of the regional. Whoever wins this game goes on to the super regional. The loser goes home. Their season is done. No bigger, more uh, stressful thing in sports than game than a game seven, especially one against a rival. And so a lot of bragging rights at stake in this one. It's going to take quite the effort from the Hoosiers to win two games against Kentucky in Lexington. That was always going to be the case, almost certainly, coming into this. The Hoosiers did it once. If they can do it one more time, take two of three this weekend or extended weekend against Kentucky, they will move on to the Super Regional. A a big, big uh, game in this one. I'm not sure where it'll be televised as I'm – Recording this late on Sunday, they haven't even put it on IU's schedule yet on their website when this game is happening, so I'm not entirely certain where it'll be televised. At the very least, it'll be on ESPN+. Plus. If I had to guess, uh, they have put it on the schedule now. They haven't put a channel or anything like that, so if I had to guess, I would say somewhere on ESPN, though the game on Saturday was on SEC Network, so just kind of stay tuned. Be on the lookout for that, but tune into a game seven. It's going to be fun. There'll be some bragging rights. It'll feel a lot like that uh, IU Kentucky second round game a number of years ago where it'll be miserable for lots of it. But if the Hoosiers win, boy, is that some bragging rights. Uh, And I will use them happily. So six o'clock tonight, be sure you guys are watching that one. Now, Let's talk some transfer news and a potential, and I use that word potential, a lot of emphasis on that, Kentucky transfer that the Hoosiers could be interested in. We'll talk about who it is and why they that player could be so intriguing to the Hoosiers here in a few moments. First, make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to 2000 $500. That is not a misprint. You did not hear me wrong. That is $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. Finals are going on. The Heat, even the series on Sunday night. You guys can bet on that. I believe there are lines to bet on college baseball as well. I mean, clearly there is. For those of you, I'm sure, saw that uh, head coaches were getting picked off a couple different places for being involved in betting scandals, Alabama, Cincinnati. So there are lines somewhere. I'm not certain if, excuse me, FanDuel uh, has them. Go check it out. See if they do bet on the Hoosiers tonight to win a game seven, because there's no better place to bet on all the postseason action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Big thanks to you guys for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every single day. We'll be back tomorrow to recap this IU Kentucky Game 7. It's going to be a big one. We'll certainly talk about that. Hopefully, but the Hoosiers making a super regional for the first time since 2013. I'll also. If they do advance, we'll explain what super regionals are because it gets a little bit tricky and regionals to super regionals just sounds weird. We'll explain everything if it happens. Also, if you guys did not see on Sunday, I don't know how much some of you are keeping up with the fever, but Grace Berger had her best game of the season for the fever. Now, it came in a loss against one of the best teams in the WNBA, uh, the Las Vegas Aces, the, the Fever gave it away. But Grace had not played more than six minutes in a game before. 
Sunday. She played 16. She looked good. She only scored once. She was one of two, but had four assists, a couple of nice feeds into the post, was really running the pick and roll pick and roll well, had a couple of rebounds, uh, did have a couple of turnovers and a couple of fouls, but in a game they lost by four, Grace was a plus nine uh, in that contest. So uh, she's earning her keep. She's earning her playing time. How much she should still be needing to do that is up for interpretation, but uh, she's absolutely performing well, and Sunday was the latest example of that. Let's switch to the men's basketball team. Hoosiers still have one open scholarship spot, and we can kind of guess who that might be until we're blue in the face. Mongolian Mike might be that guy. If you guys didn't uh, see last week, you can go back and find that episode. Another person who could be that guy, and I have to stress, this is a lot of speculation. But Antonio Reeves, he's a player. Uh, he was he played at Kentucky last season. He spent three seasons at Illinois State before that. He entered the NBA draft, withdrew, but has the possibility of graduating early this summer and then grad transferring somewhere else for another season. There's been speculation about where that might be. He hasn't even entered the transfer portal. So I want to make all that clear before we start talking. But there is smoke, a little bit of smoke out there. And the Hoosiers need another player. Need might be a strong word. There's a there's an opening for another player. And Reeves fits like a glove into what the Hoosiers would be looking for. Last season, off the bench at Kentucky, he averaged 14.4 points per game. Most importantly, he shot 39.8% from the three-point line on a tick under six attempts per game. That is very appealing. He performed well enough. He was named SEC Co-Sixth Man of the Year, but he was a strong shooter last season. Uh he had two games where he hit six three-pointers. I would imagine, and I can maybe try to look this up, there were more than two games where the Hoosiers as a team did not hit six three-pointers. Uh, he had two more games where he hit five three-pointers. A high-volume, high-efficiency shooter. Uh, there were, oh, Lord, there were a lot of games where the Hoosiers – did not hit that many three-pointers. I, I forgot how anemic this offense was at times. Yeah, there were there was a good chunk of the season, over half the season, where the Hoosiers did not hit that many three-pointers. Uh, that, that would just bring a whole other element to this team. There is, again, some, some guessing to this. He obviously is a part of a program that is – typically good Kentucky is in looking like to be bad shape going into next season though even though it's illegal you know that coaches are kind of putting out feelers and letting it be known that hey if Antonio Reeves entered the portal we would be interested is it more appealing to him to stay at Kentucky and play another season where he'll certainly get some recognition from NBA teams if that's his ultimate goal and potentially try to start, play better. At Illinois State, his last season there, he averaged 20 a game and was uh, still efficient, 46% from the field, 39% from three. Is that something he wants to try to do at Kentucky, or does he want to go to Indiana where maybe there's a bigger path for team success? Indiana's team looks like it's going to be a lot better than Kentucky's, but he's going to have to fall into a little bit more of a role, might not have as much freedom on the Hoosiers as he potentially could at Kentucky. It's hard to project what Kentucky's team's going to look like year over year, and especially with so much uncertainty heading into next season with them, it's, it's kind of hard to project. So, again, I, I want to make it clear that this is entirely – 
speculation, but he is someone that fits the bill. There is some smoke out there, and he would make sense for the Hoosiers. That's all. I'm just laying those things out. If the cards fall as they may, and he is a Hoosier, then we can look back and and talk about uh, how much sense it made, but we'll see how those things go. He's not the only guy the Hoosiers are going after right now. As we mentioned, Mongolian Mike is out there. There's also a, a new 2023 recruit out there that the Hoosiers are certainly looking at. We'll talk about who that is and what type of role he would have at next season here in just a moment. The Hoosiers aren't done in the 2023 class. Shockingly, they are not done in this 2023 class. Despite basically going uh, the majority of this class, they get the two commitments early, and then they get McKenzie and Baco late, they could potentially have a fourth commit. So class of 2023 shooting guard Joey Hart of Linton Stockton here in Indiana has recently decommitted from UCF, Central Florida, uh, reopened his commitment, and there have been a number of places that have reached out to him. He decommitted at a time that is very interesting, but means there are teams that have holes to fill, and he is an available guard that could fill those. He's a three-star shooting guard. He's an Indiana all-star. Immediately, Ball State and Indiana reached out to him. But IU, Kentucky, Texas, Rutgers, and others have all been involved. This is from Peegs, Jeff Rabjohns over there. So he, this past season at Linton Stockton, led him, Linton Stockton led them to a uh, state runner-up in Class 2A. He scored 23.7 points per game, shot 40% from the field, 60% overall. There, He's a 6'4 shooting guard, weighs 180. There would be some questions. He's a good shooter, but is he good enough to do that at a Big Ten level? Maybe the Hoosiers think so. As things stand, he is visiting IU on Monday. He will visit Kentucky later in the week, Thursday, Friday, somewhere along there. But the Hoosiers certainly have a level of interest if he is visiting campus. It would be more of a kind of a long shot project type of thing. I don't know that he would step in right away and fill that void as a shooter. He could. Depends on how badly the the Hoosiers need a shooter. And if guys like CJ Gunn. Uh, don't step up in year two. I would think CJ Gunn's going to get a chance to fill that void. He was a good shooter in high school and struggled last year. But if he continues to struggle or if Joey Hart impresses during summer workouts during the preseason, perhaps he would get that shot. It Again, I don't know that he moves the needle all that much this season but he could move the needle in future seasons if he's able to develop that shot. It's another recruiting battle with Kentucky. So it's with Kentucky and a number of other schools. Again, this is a situation where it depends on what the, the player wants. And it, I think this is an interesting situation in kind of the modern college basketball. He could go to Indiana, Kentucky, places like that where he might not play big roles right away and try to work his way through and get that role. Would he rather go to a ball state and Indiana state somewhere else where he might have a bigger role right away and he can kind of prove himself a little bit and then get that transfer to another program perhaps. And I think we'll see more and more of that as things go along is that, some of these schools will land kids like this who want to kind of prove themselves and that they belong in a bigger school and then leave after a year or two. Maybe like a Peyton Sparks might be an example of that where he really wanted to go to IU and said he went to Ball State, worked and improved, and then IU wanted him. 
I'm not saying Joey Hart really wants to go to IU, but say he goes to Ball State again or Indiana State, works really hard for a season or two, and then re-enters the portal, and this time the Hoosiers go a lot harder after him, or a Kentucky, a tennis, or a Texas, a Rutgers, whoever it might be. I think that could be a, a something we see more of in coming years and whatnot with the way the, the transfer portal is set up. So a name certainly worth watching. The Hoosiers have a couple options out there, and there's a little bit of a, a balancing act maybe. Uh, not everybody might want to come here. I mean, Mongolian Mike, IU is one of five schools with him. Joey Hart, IU is one of at least two schools he's visiting. And then Antonio Reeves, who we mentioned, isn't even in the portal yet. So there's a lot of things that could still happen with this final roster spot. It could ultimately be that the Hoosiers get nobody and they go into next season with this being their roster. Wouldn't be the worst case scenario, but I don't even think it'd be bad necessarily to just have that spot. I, I think the Hoosiers have addressed enough needs and they have enough cover. I think there's kind of a very specific type of skill set that you're looking at to try to land. And if not get more of a project, Joey Hart, Mongolian Mike, those are guys that might need a little bit more work before they get to a level of contributing, but maybe IU feels they're worth investing in with that last scholarship spot. It might tell you what the Hoosiers are kind of, prioritizing right now with going after Mongolian Mike, going after Joey Hart, and that they might want to use that last spot on somebody who might not be able to help now, but can be something down the line. You also don't want to necessarily recruit over someone like a Trey Galloway, who has been a very loyal servant to this team for a while and has done nothing to necessarily earn being recruited over. Uh, you don't, it can send mixed messages at times. So it's kind of a dynamic you have to balance right now with the transfer portal and how everything is going. So we'll see how the Hoosiers use this, this final scholarship spot. seems like it'll be an interesting week in that regard between Mongolian Mike, between Joey Hart, and maybe if Antonio Reeves enters the portal and if the Hoosiers have interest, there's a lot of things that could happen. So, even though we're entering into a period, we're going to be going to three days a week. There'll still be plenty to talk about. Uh, even going to three days a week, if there's some big news that happens, that leaves us some room to potentially do an emergency show. So if something big happens and the Hoosiers land somebody, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Excuse me. Make sure you guys are following us on Twitter. Make sure you are following us on YouTube. In case we do some of these live shows, that uh, you guys can join in on the conversation and you don't miss anything. But thanks for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every single day. Uh, every day, or again, tomorrow on the show, or it'll be Wednesday. Let me make that clear. Wednesday on the show, we will recap what happened with IU baseball, get you set looking forward. And then any other transfer news that happens, we'll touch on that as well. I would love to do weekly this week, but there are things going on away from Locked on Hoosiers that will prevent me from doing that uh, probably for most of June. So bear with us, and maybe once July comes around, we'll go back to daily. But for June, we're going to be going to three days a week. Make sure you guys are subscribed everywhere so you do not miss out. As always, guys, I hope you all have a terrific start to your week. Most importantly, LEO.